While I've never been so lucky as to receive a sponsor for this channel just yet, occasionally I do get a few CD keys sent my way. Back in this channel's infancy, when I barely had any idea what I was doing with it, I had a habit of accepting anything that came to me. These days though, I'm a little more careful, making sure to stick to the sci-fi theme I'm trying to establish. Most of the time though, I simply don't accept. Why? Because it isn't always easy dishing out even a 10 minute review, let alone managing multiple works in a week, sometimes amounting to 30 to 40 minutes of video. However, this week will be different. It must be different, for it seems the gaming gods have finally smiled upon me. Um, Konami has long been a powerful figure in gaming, so it would be an understatement to say that without a doubt, it's an honor for a backwards channel such as mine to receive a Contra title. Upon seeing an email stating that THE Konami had just offered me a code for Operation Galuga, I messaged my wife, giddy like a schoolchild who had just found a $100 bill on the playground. So thank you Konami, send me more keys, like all the keys. All of that being said though, I'm known for my harsh and unforgiving truths when it comes to beloved franchises that people over defend. I mean, just look at the comments on any of my videos. Apparently, I'm just a hater, hating on those fluffy childhood memories which often surround the worst of games. And seeing as Konami hasn't given me any sort of prerequisite conditions for receiving Contra Operation Galuga, I'm pretty much free to say anything I want. So beware all, this one was actually pretty good. Yeah, so let it be stated that I have a lot of experience with the Contra series. Not only did I enjoy the original title and its many versions, but I also fell madly in love with Contra 3, its Game Boy Advance port, Shattered Soldier, and 4. It would sicken you to know how many hours I had sunk into all of these titles, or the fact that I actually managed to crush Shattered Soldier several times without dying. I'm just that good, or I was when I was 16. Of course, I've played some of the worst titles as well. I'm not going to say that the series has always been at its pinnacle, that would be a blatant lie, though I've never actually played the more recent Rogue Corps title, so don't expect any comparisons. Not that this game looks anything like that one anyhow. You'll be surprised to find that Operation Galuga is a remake of the original game, or more of a reimagining. For nearly half of my first playthrough, I'd found myself doing a double take, wondering if this had been just that. I suppose that's where I should have done some more research long before I was scaling waterfalls and battling monstrous alien figures. Now, no Contra game is known for its story, though all of them sort of had one. My personal favorite is, and will always be, Shattered Soldier. In fact, that game still sits at the very top for me when it comes to Contra titles. Operation Galuga probably has the most fleshed out narrative I've seen in one of these games. It seems like, for whatever reason, the choice was to encapsulate the original game's late 80s time frame, providing a cheesy, low-grade cartoon story that feels a little too nostalgic for my liking. Often, I found myself flashing back to a time thoroughly consisting of G.I. Joe and Mask reruns. That, and, I don't know, Earthworm Jim. Okay. A few too many times, I found myself pulled away from the action to experience Bill Riser's cringy one-liners and the back and forth received by an incredibly talented cast. There are simply too many actors to mention here, though be sure that Kira Buckland, notable for the voice of 2B in Near Automata, and Steve Blum, the voice in almost every game with the gruff character holding a gun, appear here. Buckland as Lucia and Blum as Riser. Alejandro Saab, who I'm probably messing up the name of, thankfully provides a tamer interpretation of Lance Bean, in stark contrast to just about anyone else handling voice work here. Brett Gibson, who's voicing Sabretooth in the upcoming Wolverine game, embraces his inner ham, playing a villain that would fit right into the aforementioned cartoons. Yes, including Earthworm Jim. I'm glad you were able to speak with Beowulf before I secured the Lemris, so you can comprehend the totality of your defeat. <laughs> Seriously, Moranis is awful, though in a way that I feel is absolutely intentional. So I stand by it, this game is absolutely supposed to resemble a late 80s, early 90s cartoon. A few other characters join the team as well, rounding out the cast and giving players a chance to experience certain stages from their perspective with some extra abilities at times. Of course, none of this is different in any significant way, merely a few lines of dialogue and some alternate interactions. Honestly, I've been dancing around it, but the story is actually just nonsense. It's all about establishing what a Contra is, the presence of a Contra gene that turns people into Contras. 
While I'd be all aboard for it, all the characters tote guns and the only actual special ability they have is doing wild spin jumps. Everything boils down to good aliens leaving a special artifact in ancient times to fight against the bad aliens in modern times. Their magic cube apparently affects humanity so that they can perform these jumps, therefore giving our species an upper hand when it comes to Space Jam 3 or something. Being a modern game, I'm obviously leaving out major spoilers, though it's hard to say that anything aside from the ending itself is an actual spoiler. Every part of me wishes that Operation Galuga had been a little more muted, so that the game's story was a little more tolerable, rather than goofy and full of thin characters with great voice acting. And that ending? Let's just say that this game ends with approximately three cliffhangers, all of them hinting towards future iterations in what could possibly be a remake series. Would I play them? Well, yeah. I might have not appreciated the story here, but there are enough gameplay options to overshadow it. Playing the actual game was an outstanding experience, and I enjoyed every minute of it. If you've ever played a Contra game, you'll know what to expect here. All the original game's bosses appear, but with a little bit of remucking. In that regard, you're still going to see all the classic moments you enjoyed back in the original Nintendo version. It just looks better, and plays way better too. Even if you don't enjoy the narrative, seeing all the recreated and reconstructed areas are worth the price of entry alone. That price being around $40 on Steam as of writing this video. So uh, maybe $30 would be a little bit better, honestly. Aside from the story, there is a classic arcade mode that allows players to experience Operation Galuga in a more traditional format. You'll be dropping in and getting absolutely brutalized by aliens in no time. You'll be able to unlock every character from the main story to play here as well, allowing you to play through the entire game as anyone you've managed to unlock. Oh, and if you happen to be one of those people who grew up around those censored Probotector versions of Contra, fear not, they're included here as well. Not only that, but after you beat Story Mode, a few Contra Hardcorps characters appear as well. Contra Force Challenge Mode also reappears, giving characters a chance to beat their heads against the wall after failing an ultra-difficult objective once again. More importantly, it also adds to what I feel is an outstanding replay value. Online opinion being what it is, there is likely, if there hasn't already been, going to be a lot of backlash coming from those who don't appreciate the inclusion of a health bar, or I suppose those special abilities that certain characters can get, such as dash, slide, grappling hook, or a hover pack. Certainly, there will be talk of the series purity being tarnished due to a perk shop existing, where players can spend earned points to unlock additional health, lives, abilities, and modifiers. Though it might be wise to mention that additional characters, a speedrun mode, classes, and bonus background music, including tracks from Castlevania, are available after completing the storyline. But I assure you, these concerns aren't warranted. This is still a Contra game. Whatever advantages you now receive are vastly outweighed by a growing difficulty. That is, unless you play on easy. If that isn't enough for you, just turn it off. Operation Galuga's health bar is completely optional, and if you don't like additional lives and certain modifiers, put the game on hard. Yes, this game has a bevy of options that allow you to play the game as leisurely or white knuckled as you like. Though, be sure that if you really want to unlock everything in the shop, only the brave will be awarded a fair amount of those oh-so-sweet perk points. Otherwise, prepare to grind through the game about 800 times. I might say that this would be incredibly boring, yet with the story and arcade mode supporting couch co-op, I'm not sure that that's the case. Why not bring a sibling along or a loved one? Contra is the perfect way to break those bonds that you once thought were unbreakable, as soon as stage 3. For me, I brought the whole family along. Though chaotic with four players on screen, playing Operation Galuga's arcade mode with a full group is an absolute blast. Due to differing skill levels, we didn't exactly make it past stage 3, but it didn't stop us from playing this mode for two whole hours. It seems like, after all these years, the Contra formula still retains its fun factor. Those looking for the more gritty and gross look of Shattered Soldier are going to be massively disappointed. Or, I know I was. Or not. Honestly, I didn't think about it before actually writing this script. As with the story, this game is very cartoony. It's bright, colorful, and noticeably trying to sidestep its very loved, though undeniably edgy, older brother. As the bulk of humanity has suffered a plague of gunmetal gray and sepia tone games for over a decade now, it's nice to see a game with shooting that isn't colored like the underside of a pickup truck. It also helps that no matter which character you're playing as, they are visible on screen. Sometimes the action gets so heated that you'd swear your new Contra game just became the second iteration of Ibarra. 
I'm not going to pretend that I love everything here though. At times, I felt that some of the designs and ideas clashed with one another. Explaining the aliens, giving them a vocal leader with a plan makes all the wild strange things happening feel very disjointed. Maybe it's been explained elsewhere, but you know, just in a booklet or something and applied here? I don't know. But I didn't like the idea of the Zagard. Doing this was nearly as bad as when they explained the Joker in that movie, the Joker. Sometimes not knowing the motives or intentions of something makes them far more effective, certainly freakishly unpredictable. Contra always had an element of horror outside of its action movie premise, but that just isn't here at all. Thankfully, it's been backed up by some incredibly good gameplay that I really can't see myself getting bored of anytime soon. Are you playing the new Contra game? Let me know in the comments below, and if you'd like more information, check the description below. I've been given a link, and if you click it, I get more keys from Konami if they like me. So please, if you want to support the channel, do that.